is that strategy that I talked about earlier, and again, this is internal speak, but I think it's important. We call it the Mach 18 strategy because the, the vision for the group and the brand is by 2018 to be the most successful manufacturer in the industry. And success is defined by many, many terms. It's not just volume alone. Remember, it's about quality. And it's about things such as supporting the, de the dealer network, uh, the customer experience, uh, the vehicle quality and reliability. All of those six tenets, if you will, those are all things that we're focused on uh, and have been quite a while now because that's the foundation for our future, future success. And I'll touch just briefly on some of those here in the next couple of slides and then we'll hand it over to, uh, to Kevin and Doug. <coughs> dealer network. Um, again, people have asked, you know, well, to support these, these brand sales that you have of 800,000 VWs in the U.S. market, you must be, you want to add, you know, more dealers. Well, we maybe want to add a few, but not a lot, because again, it's about quality, not quantity. We want the best business partners that can support the vision that we have for success with this brand. And these are just three key examples. Uh, Rick and Rita Case, I think. Uh, they are some of the most savvy and, I think, successful dealer entrepreneurs, I think, that I've ever met. Uh, a husband and wife team, really, really sharp people, focused on customer treatment. And they're building this new facility in, in uh, Florida. When it is complete, it'll be the largest VW <coughs> dealer it, dealership in, 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 in the U.S. Uh, another uh, key element here on the West Coast, here in an area close by, the Galpins. Uh, if, if you're familiar with the industry in the U.S., the dealer, the automotive dealer network, uh, Galpin is the Galpins are are pretty savvy as well. They think they have the largest Ford dealership in, in the U.S. Uh, but more importantly is they are known for really being customer-centric, excellent customer treatment, focus on the customer cuts, customer retention, really good business partners to have. And the, the third facility in Woodlands, Texas, uh, this is significant because in the U.S., uh, Texas is a large, large untapped area. It's not just a big state, but it also has a lot of untapped potential for the brand. And it's important to have really good representation there. So, and I, I draw your attention just to that last column there because what you can see is it's not about expanding the number of dealers. It's not about expanding the footprint. It's about making sure the quality of the dealership process is sufficient to support the brand. You can see the increasing numbers in, in throughput there. So again, it's not about increasing the number of dealers. It's about increasing the, 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 the number of throughput because uh, and this is where I maybe sound a little corny, but uh, I've come from an area that was uh, mostly dairy uh, back in northern Vermont. Um, and uh, one of the sayings there was, okay, happy cows get more milk, right? And you say, what the hell does that mean? How does that relate to this? Well, a profitable dealer is going to be more inclined to treat a customer properly and look at that whole ownership experience. And that's one of the key points here, focusing on quality, not necessarily quantity. CPO, too, a uh, very, very important part of the business as we grow because we know from our Audi experience, residual value is an important aspect of the whole owner experience. If you have a car with good residual value, you know, when that owner has to dispose of it and get another car, if, if the car has good residual value, guess what? They're going to be probably more inclined to stay with the brand and have, an, have another model. So. That's one of the reasons why CPO is so important to us. And I think you can see here, we really have expanded our business in year over year with a, more than a 15% increase. And, and we've got some pretty robust and solid and deep CPO processes in place in the network. Quality, an area that obviously is, is, is uh, near and dear to my heart. Um, as you may have heard me talk about in previous discussions, Quality is not just about what many people assume. When you mention quality, they think about, oh, in, in the context of a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a vehicle, well, it's about reliability. It's about how often does the car break? How often does it need to go to the dealership? Well, it's, it's much more than that. It's about the fit and finish. It's about the, the gas. It's about the aesthetic appeal. I mean, there, there's all these different aspects of quality. And one of them shows up in this study that is done yearly by J.D. Power, the appeal study. In here, I think an aspect of quality that the Volkswagen brand and the entire group does really well at is the appeal, the intrinsic appeal of the car to the customer. And you can see here, as I mentioned earlier, the Passat, second year in a row, second year in a row, best in its segment, most appealing car in its segment. And if you look at the rest of the key offerings in the Volkswagen portfolio, 
they're either at the top or near the top of their respective of their respective uh, vehicle segments. So I think that's a very important aspect of quality. But there's more to it than that. Um, IQS, something that we've been working on uh, quite a lot since 2010, uh, where we put in place processes and objectives to improve our performance there. Because some people argue, well, it's not that relevant. It's you know, it's just another JD Power questionnaire. Well, we think it is pretty relevant because it's 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 uh, focused on an aspect of the owner experience that defines what I call the softer side of quality. Uh, you'll see more questions about ease of understanding, ease of operation. Uh, not the, not so much the traditional, is it broken, is it not working? And this is a key element to securing a really premium, satis uh, satisfying customer experience. And we're working a lot on this uh, in terms of changing seat designs, changing seat controls, changing uh, climate control interfaces, calibrating engines like you'll see today in the 1.8T to reduce hesitation complaints. And we've closed the gap there where we're at the industry level and I think I'm pretty sure next year, the next IQS rating, you'll see the Volkswagen brand above the industry average. So, and, and to accomplish these objectives, um, we put in place processes three years ago to really have a structured approach to bringing this voice of the customer feedback into the parent organization that impacts factory processes, it impacts design decisions, and it impacts things that we do to support the whole customer experience. Um, I know it's a busy chart, but just a point of reference, uh, every three months, for example, we and the team here from the U.S. is over in Wolfsburg meeting with the top level of people, board members on down, Dr. Hockenberg, who else now is Dr. Neuser, uh, Mr. Vottle, who's the board member for production, feeding in things that we need in this market. And it's not just about, okay, the American market has to be first. I give credit to the top management in this company because they realized quite a long time ago that, you know what, there's just so much more transparency here in the North American market that we can get information from the customer that we can't get in other markets. And if we listen to that and really apply that in our decision making, we can make the brand stronger in every market. We can use the North American market sort of like a listening post. And that's what this process here was set up to establish. And we're starting to see a lot of results. You saw that IQS chart where, we're, where, we're, where we, re we reversed the trend and we're at industry levels. But I think for me, this is probably one of the most important charts because this is directly my responsibility, right? How many warranty claims do we get per vehicle? How many times does a customer actually have to go back to the to get something repaired or, or replaced? And you can see here in the past three years, we've been able to reduce that level down almost half from what it was previously. And that's not to mean in 2010 and 2011 it was a disaster. No, it wasn't. But we've been able to bring this level now down to, to uh, levels that are below some significant competitors that you might be surprised if I name the brands. And uh, if, you, if you go and talk to VW dealers, they're all complaining for a good thing. Because they'll all tell you, you know what? I sell my car and I don't see the customer anymore like I used to. They never come back. My back end is empty. You know, I think that's a good thing. Thank <laughs> you.